Hi folks, Buckley here. We're going to practice some more uh, orthographic projection of various shaped objects. So um, we're going to continue with our examination of kind of simple shapes, fun shapes. Um, if you get these uh, down, you've got a, a really good chance of knowing the fundamentals um, as we head into some of our solid modeling. So um, let's start with, uh, with this shape here. This is a neat little block shape. Um, and let me put a quarter on there for scale. I'm going to rotate the object in space. And I'd like you guys right now, so the, the best way to, to do this exercise is to uh, try your hand at sketching on your own first, doing an orthographic projection. And then watch me uh, do, the, do the orthographic projection and double check your work afterwards. Um, so here, here we go. Okay, so I'm going to orient this object in space so you can kind of see um, its front, its sides, everything. Once you get an image of the object, you may want to put me on pause or rewind this portion. And uh, I'll start sketching in just a, a minute or two after I finish flipping this around so you have an idea of what it is. Okay. Interesting little shape. This is a Melissa and Doug wooden toy. Again, there are muse for the course. They make really nice stuff. Okay, so uh, this would be a good time to put me on pause and rewind if you want to see more about that shape. Otherwise, um, I'm going to start sketching, okay? So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to pick a, a reasonable uh, front face. And again, our rules for picking a front face are um, a, a face that is going to, a view that's going to show the most interesting features of the part and that's gonna have the fewest number of hidden lines. So on this part here, there are um, good choices for the front face and then there are less good choices for the front face. So this view here is a particularly good choice for the front face. It would also be good in almost any orientation. Um, I'm gonna do it like this, cause thinking ahead, I have to draw even fewer hidden lines if I'm doing like this. But if you sketched it like this or like this, that would be totally fine too. Okay, that was like that. Either way, um, a less good view would be something like a side, okay, as the front, all right, so that would have a hidden line. Um, but again, if you can make a strong argument that this is going to be an important view for some reason, maybe because it fits in with another block and this L is really important, you know, you could make an argument. Um, it would have to be a good one, <laughs> but uh, this here seems like the most logical choice. A really bad choice for the front face would be something like this, right? So this hides all the most important features. So this would not be a good choice. Okay, so I'm gonna pick this face here as my front, um, which would make this the top and this the side, the right side if I'm doing a third angle projection. Okay, so let me start with my front face. So I'm going to leave the object up here so you guys can see it, and then I'm going to start sketching below. So basically, that's something that looks like this. And it's a square to start with. The outermost edge is a square. And it looks like that's about halfway. So I'm going to draw a line. Well, actually, this is kind of interesting, right? So I have a hole in the center, so let me draw that hole first. That hole seems to be about yay big. And that hole forms a boundary. So that's what I'm looking at there for my front face. A little bit shrunk from the actual size, but not bad for a freehand sketch. I'm not going to go over it just yet. I'm going to, when I do orthographic projection, I do a double check on all my work before I go over in marker, but I've got all my physical boundaries, right? Everything here is a solid object line. Nothing is hidden. All right, now for my top, all right? So my top view is going to look like this. I'm going to come up. Remember, I want everything nice and aligned here, guys. So I go ahead and draw some construction lines to help me with that. see what we're looking at here. If we look dead on, you can see there's a hard line here, right? So this is an object line that runs all the way across. 
but I also have object lines here and here. That's a hard break between the bottom part of the circle and this flat edge. So that would be this guy coming up. So if I want to come up off of that feature, and this guy coming up off of that feature. Now also important is I have a hidden line, right? So, so this line here is actually going to extend back. So if I were to look dead on through here, I've got a object line, which is the remainder of this hole coming through the, all the way through the back that continues through. So I actually have a hidden line coming down like this. And now would probably be a good time to start thinking about my center line features. I, I'm okay if you want to add these all the way at the end or if you want to add them in here. Okay, there's a center line. Center lines, if you're going to do super, um, super picky drafting notation tend to extend off of, they have to extend off of the object line. All right, I'll make sure I reinforce that when I go back over in marker. Okay, last but not least, I'm going to do my right side view. Okay, so I've got kind of an L, but then I, I can't forget about that whole feature. So I'm going to come in here. And I'm going to start with the full width knowing that this is going to be coming down half width, okay? So I've got myself this guy coming over halvesies. Grab my eraser real quick. And this guy. Now let me deal with this hole. Okay, so this hole First off, the bottom goes all the way across as a hidden line. And the top is going to be across over like that. The center line is going to extend through. All right, that looks pretty good. So let me double check that I've got everything before I go over in marker. All right, on my front view, I have all solid object lines. I've got my outer edge, I've got my hole, and then I've got this hard line that represents this boundary. Nothing else is going on. Mark the center of my one circular feature. Then I come up to my top view. On my top view, I've got basically a box, right, all the way around, but then there's a hard line all the way across. That's this boundary. Then I've got these two hard edges here, these two hard object lines, which extend on the front part, but then they continue all the way back through because this hole goes all the way through the part, right? It's coming all the way through the part. And then this center line to mark. So I've got hard object line and then a hidden object line or a hidden line going back through and my center line. All right, on the right side view, double checking again. My big boundary is my L. Then I've got this circular feature that I need to take care of. Okay, that's gonna come through as a, uh, as a hidden line on both edges with a center line coming across. So I think I got this right, and now it's time to go ahead and uh, go over it in marker. Again, when I'm making object lines or hidden lines, I like to use my marker fine-tipped uh, Sharpie pen. And I'm going to go back over my center lines with a thinner pen in just a second, not the marker. It's a little bit hard to tell on the document camera, but there is a a line weight difference between the two. Now I'm going to take my finer pen, 
again, I know I've mentioned this, guys, but it really is worth it to buy you know, two or three good items for drawing. You don't have a textbook in this class, so treat yourselves or tell your parents that you want some good drafting items that will serve you well as, as engineers. Okay, so I think I got everything there. I'm going to now go through with my eraser. I'm going to clean up. Pretty decent freehand sketch, folks, of this object. All right, let's try another part here uh, with our exercise in orthographic projection. Uh, this is another piece from Melissa and Doug. Um, if you're wondering what this is, this is actually the head of a bolt for um, the erector set. So you guys are making the UD Erector set. There's the construction set in a box from Melissa and Doug that has um, these, these bolts. And this is just the head of it. So this threaded piece is just connected with a little bit of wood glue. Um, and uh, we're left with this really interesting um, uh, hexagonal piece for the bolt head. So we're gonna sketch that. We we're not gonna worry about the threaded piece um, with the sketching, uh, but we'll do the, we'll do the head. Again, uh, a good way to do these exercises with me, folks, is to uh, put me on pause after I show you the object and to try to sketch on your own and then to critique your drawing um, after you've seen what, what I've done. Okay, so this is meant to be participatory, not passive. So uh, here's your scale. And uh, let me just kind of flip this object around so you can see what's going on. We got a hole in the back. Got that slot in the front. There's the thickness. There's nothing happening. That's a chip, so ignore that. Um, nothing happening on the other sides. Okay, that slot would be. This is like a flathead. If you if you know your hardware. If not, we'll learn it later in the course. But that would be for a flathead screwdriver. Um, there's a hole in the back that would have accepted that thread. All right. So put me on pause now and do your best to try to sketch this piece. And uh, I'm going to get started right now. Okay, so uh, our first order of business, folks, is to figure out what the logical front view would be. Um, again, there are good choices and there are not so good choices. Um, a not so good choice would be something like, like this, okay, which um, has sort of an odd view on the side here. We'd have to deal with hidden lines. Um, it's not really showing the full features of the, of the head, so it would be coming out rectangular with a couple lines in it. Um, it's not showing anything uh, on the base or on the top um, with, without a hidden, uh, hidden line. So those would not be good choices. Better choices would be um, twofold. This, this is the, probably the best choice, which is it shows the, the head, that hex head in full profile, as well as the slot. Um, the only thing that would be hidden would be the hole underneath. We would have a hidden line. Um, this is also not bad. In this instance, you would then have the slot as hidden and the hole as, as a solid line. Uh, either of those are good, good um, uh, views. An okay view would be something like this, okay? Um, if you're really concerned about the width of that slot for some reason, this may be an option, but, or the thickness of the head. But really the best choice would be something like this. Okay, so we're gonna take this as our, as our front um, actually, you know, again, like the, this is equally as good. Oops, can't see that. That's equally as good as a front view too, but um, I prefer to look at the, look at that slotted feature. Okay, so I'm gonna stick this up here and start drawing. Um, so probably the easiest thing to do here, guys, would be to start with kind of a, with, with sort of a rectangle. Um, we've gotta watch our perspective as we do this because um, it's actually quite difficult to draw it to draw a hex and get those sides to be even um, so What I'm gonna do here is carve this guy up This needs to be in the middle I'm gonna Give it my best shot Try 
trying to get those sides nice and even. It might be a little bit skewed, but that's not too bad. Stretch that guy out just a little bit. Go over it with my marker. I'll lengthen that top piece. Okay, um, so I've got that. Now I've got a slot down the middle. So if this were my midline, I've got a hard slot. And then on the back there, if I were to make a center, I've got a circle. I'm going to tighten that up just a little bit. Notice if I get something wrong, okay, I'm not going in and erasing on top of that because I'm going to I'm going to actually come through with my eraser at the end. Now this guy is going to be a dotted line, so that actually maybe I will tackle with my eraser here. Do 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 do. That's going to be dotted when I go through, right? Okay, but uh, it's going to be a little bit tighter than I originally drew it. Okay. So if that's my front face, with this hole being a dotted line, this, this is going to be erased. So I'm going to mark it with a little X. Let me look at my top view. Okay. So my top view is interesting. Um, so first off, the boundary, the outer boundary, is going to come off of this edge. So it needs to be as wide as this. When you're drawing, guys, I'd like you to leave a hefty amount of space in between your sketches. Very soon we're going to get to the point where you're going to do uh, dimensions in this region here, so leave a little bit of room. Okay, you're also going to have an edge coming off of here and here. And this guy is a slotted feature now, so that's going to come down and over, and this is actually going to be gone. tempted at this point to say, okay, well, I've got this back edge to my part two, right, back here. Well, that sits under this line on top, right? And if you remember from our rules of uh, creating orthographic projections, object lines are going to take precedent over hidden lines. So even though there's a hidden line under there, um, the object line is going to be first. So it's going to sit on top. So this back edge is already taken care of because right, it sits right underneath this guy, so they're in line. Okay, the last thing I need to do is the circle, and the circle is not seen on that view, right, that hole. Okay, and that goes to about half depth, so I can see the depth of this. So I'm going to come up from the diameter of my circle, and I'm going to come over like so. Okay, and that is my feature. All right, so actually for this part, you really only need two views to do a full definition. Um, so, uh, but just for, I, I told you in class, I'm never gonna fault you for doing more views. So um, just for good measure and for practice, I'd like us to go ahead and draw the right side view on this guy. Um, and then we're actually gonna go through and we're gonna make sure that we've got our, uh, our center lines added. I might do that as the last thing. Um, just because my drawing is getting a little cluttered, but I do have a circular feature here with the hole that I need to add in. Okay, so right side view. Right side view is going to look like this. Okay, in this instance, I have the same thickness. Same thickness. I've got an edge that's going to show up right here. Oops sure you see that. This edge right here is going to show up. It's this guy. I have a slot that's going to run vertically off of this face, and that's going to be the depth. So I'm going to see this bottom line here, right, that's going to run down. And then last but not least, coming off of, let's see, this bottom edge, I'm going to have that same feature coming off the bottom like that 
Okay. So you can see this really is not a good choice. You can see there's better and worse choices for front views um, and uh, of this object, right? So if you'd pick something like this as a front view, that wasn't a really good choice. Um, it's better as a right side view, but that's what it would look like. Okay, I'm going to go over with marker and then I'm going to uh, erase. And then as the last thing, I want to make sure I add in those center lines. So let me do my double check. Okay, so uh, front view, I got a hex. I have the slot feature. I have the whole, I'm, I'm going to erase this outer one. I have my scale wrong and I'm going to do my inner one as a, uh, as a dotted line, as a hidden line there. So I got all my features there. My top view, actually, you know what? I have a major problem already on my top view. Okay, so technically when I spun this up, I should have a top view that looks like this. Okay, so it's a good thing I caught that. So actually, what's going to happen is my features are going to be flipped. So I'm going to come in and erase this immediately. Everybody see that? So I had drawn my top view like this when I should have drawn it like this to reorient the object. Okay, so technically what I've got here is whoop, whoop, got my hole coming down like this and the slot coming up that. Okay, so that's the proper top view. And then my right view, okay, boundary, hard edge across, line coming down, and then that hole in the center. Okay, looking good, gang. All right, so let me go over this with marker. And this will clean up some of my sketch lines. Making sure that center one is a um, is a dotted line, hidden line. I think I got all my lines. Now I'm going to go through and erase, and this should tidy this up real nicely. There we go. Pretty. All right. Last but not least, gang, you do have a circular feature on this part, which is this hole in the back. So let's make sure that we've got our center lines for that. I'm going to mark it in X and Y on the front, only in X on the top view, and only in Y on the side view. All right, guys, that's this part. Okay, let's try another part here. Uh, this part, we're going to do orthographic projection again. Um, let me put some scale in there. And again, what I'm reminding you guys is please, um, uh, this is participatory, so uh, do your best at sketching this piece, uh, doing an orthographic projection, and then following along with me afterwards. But I'm going to spin this object around in space so you can kind of see what it looks like. Nothing going on, nothing funky on the sides. It's like an arch. All right, so pause me here and see if you can do an orthographic projection of this. And then I'll take over and, uh, and check your work. Okay, so again, there's a very obvious choice here for uh, the front view. Um, and that would be something like this, okay? This guy or obviously the back side would look like that. You can sketch it upwards like this, um, or we could go downwards like this. Thinking a little bit ahead, if I go upwards, um, my top view is going to have uh, no hidden lines. If I go like this, it will have hidden lines. So um, your call on that. 
Uh, I'll probably sketch it upwards like this, um, but this is also not incorrect if you take that approach for your front view. Um, and then side view is going to look like this. We can't get around the hidden lines on the side view. Actually, if I have my front view like that, it'll look like this. Okay, so I'm going to put this object up here and start sketching. Um, so there's a really big circular feature here, obviously. So I'm going to start by just kind of making a rectangle. And then I'm going to work on that circular feature. Coming in. This is all going to be solid lines on this front view. And this guy is going to be gone. Okay, so a little bit of my sketch lines there. It's a decent front view. I'm going to go ahead and add my center lines here. So um, this is a circular feature. So I'm going to have a center line coming through like this. make this one pretty short. It would be more like a center mark on the top. So I'm just going to go ahead and make that a center mark. All right. So that's this guy. My top view is going to look like this. As I mentioned before, if I make this my front view, I'm going to have um, solid lines here. If I make this my top view, I'm actually going to have hidden lines for those two object lines. But because of my orientation, uh, for my front view, this is going to be my top, so everything will be shown. So I'm going to go ahead up and extend this. And these guys are going to come up as solid lines. That guy looks a little crooked, so I'm going to work on that a little bit. Okay. All right, so that is, oops, that is my top view. And again, this is a circular feature. So this center line here will, will need it in the horizontal to locate the center of the circle in the horizontal here. So don't forget your center lines. All right, so the right side view is the last one that I need. So it's gonna look like this. I'm gonna come over. On this guy, I have um, the bottom of the circle is actually going to come across as a dotted line. So this bottom here is a boundary between the object and physical space inside this hole. So right here is actually showing up right here as a horizontal. All right, so um, I'm also going to need uh, my center line is going to come across. It's it is uh, overwritten by an object line, so you're really not going to see it, but you could have it be an extension if you wanted to, but that's actually um, probably not going to show the, the center line over there because the object line sits over top of it. Okay, let me do my final check, and then I'm going to go over in ink. Uh, so my front view, I have my front view, I have object lines all the way around no hidden lines. My center line for my circular feature is shown. For my top view, uh, I've got a boundary all the way around, and then I've got two hard edges here and here, which are also object lines, and I need to locate my center line dead smack through the middle. For the right side view, uh, I have basically a block, but then I have a hidden line inside that's the bottom of the circle that's going to come across. The center line is overwritten by an object line, so I'm not going to show the center line um, for this top part here. The center of that circle would actually pass right through that edge, and that's not going to show. All right, I'm ready to go over an ink.
just going to do my object and my hidden lines in this heavier ink. And then I'm going to come through and do my center lines in the lighter line width. Okay. There's our drawing. <laughs> 